Hi, this is a continuation of the earlier tutorial on modeling uh, assembly inside space claim. In this video tutorial, we are going to see how assembly conditions or constraints are defined between different paths or components inside an assembly. Okay, so we'll activate the design. To make things interesting, we can click on solid, go to display. Maybe you can change, make some changes of the colors. Let's make the sliders color as say magenta and coupler. Okay. Space claim has different assembly conditions that are listed at the right top corner of the <coughs> screen so we need to first fix the base component and select base component and click on the anchor symbol so that will make sure that the base component is fixed and we can't move that once that is done we need to create a revolute joint between the base and the crank so since space claim does not have a revolute joint yet so that needs to be done as a combination of a cylindrical joint cylindrical condition and a planar condition so to make things simpler I'll just disable all origin so that things are looking better now so I selected on crank component and then we moved it so that is how you move a component around let's click on align and we need to select two surfaces so if you select two cylindrical surfaces of two different components yeah this is a condition in space claim that the condition should be uh, the assembly constant should be defined between two components okay we have selected two cylinders and there's a cylindrical condition between these two components now along this axis common axis of the cylinder so after that the, uh, the condition is still selected so we select the upper surface of base and the lower surface of the crank So combining these two we now have a revolute joint to see it in action let's select on crank and click on move so that gives us a triad which can be used to move around and see whether our joints are behaving properly so as it shows it just gives us that it has one only one degree of freedom from along which we can use it so let's have a condition of say, 300 degrees so as you can see we are able to move our crank now let's create the second condition since these two are already planar I'll begin with planar and second is this they were in the same plane so it doesn't move but otherwise if they are in different planes they come together in one plane and we select on these two cylinders okay the we now have two joints in place let's okay let's do we move the slider out so that it's easier for us to define conditions once we have this we need to make sure that it's we have condition between the bottom surface bottom face of slider and top face of base and then we select one of the sides 
of the slider and corresponding side of base okay now the way I did it to move around that made the work simpler if the condition is here then assigning con uh, joints becomes slightly difficult so now we will be done with only one joint we will need to define a, a cylindrical between okay coupler and this cylinder there you go since we have planar joints defined between the other components the planar condition between the top surface of slider and bottom surface of the coupler is not necessary that would make it redundant let's go to the top view and again click on crank and click on move so we can reorient this triad so that we have its center here and accordingly we can move and see our slider crank in motion this is very much what a space claim by default has so if it is a single degree of freedom or if you just want to define one motion it is simple enough but if you have more motion for your mecha mechanisms then you would actually require a motion simulation add-in such as SC motion which I'll be covering in next video thank you